Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance originally came way back in 2001 for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Hopefully we can skip all the comments about oh the Switch just has a load of rubbish old games and this should definitely run at 60 FPS, which, yeah, it's kind of true, but we've also seen with many of the old games, in air quotes, that have been ported across to the Switch, the performance has not been right. And with Baldur's Gate, if you've been following it, Black Isle Studios have had an absolute nightmare getting it onto the Switch, and the release date was postponed without warning, and in fact it was initially announced without warning as well, and who knows how the performance is gonna turn out. So, we're gonna go through frame rates, we'll go through the visual quality, We'll go for how it runs in co-op mode as well for those people people that want to play local co-op. And we'll also look at handheld text size and all that good stuff that you might need before you make your buying decision. At the end of the video, I'll talk about my impressions of the game. So with that said, if you enjoy the content, then consider sticking around. Hit all the buttons, <laughs> as long as they're the positive ones. And uh, is it a perfect port? Well, let's find out. Let's get straight into the nitty gritty with the frame rates and this is probably the best performance I've seen in any game on the Nintendo Switch. Whether it's a port or whether it's a new title or just a low fidelity one, this is up there with the 60fps Nintendo titles of old and it doesn't drop. The frame pacing as you can see is incredibly low. What that means is that with the 60fps and very low frame pacing that doesn't hitch or stutter in any real areas. The game is so easy to control, and actually when you compare it, or I should say contrast it with the PS2 version, you really can see a tangible difference, and that translates to a much more pleasant gaming experience. It was never bad in terms of its performance, but it certainly had some hitches and drops, and enjoying it co-op with my boy at 60fps has been a real delight so far. Thankfully, the 60fps performance is maintained when playing in handheld mode. Now, the developers have quite clearly stated that this isn't a remaster, it isn't really a remake in any way, this is simply a re-release with some upscaled resolutions. And as far as resolution goes, well I think we're looking at native in docked and handheld, thankfully. Which, particularly when playing in handheld, actually doesn't look half bad. The game had a lot of effects that were quite ahead of its time. I guess most notably it would be the water physics that weren't just applied to your player's movements but also the enemies so you'd see the rats come in by the ripples on the water which I seem to remember being very cool and now that it's running at 60 looks even better. That's not to say that it doesn't still look like an old PS2 title because let's be honest it does but as far as that performance goes I'm very impressed and yes the person that's typing that comment oh Nintendo fanboys will buy anything on the Switch well no not really but, you know, it's a review channel, so whatever. If we look at the load times, I think this is also another important area where it's better quality of life on the Switch, as they're almost instant. You're looking at a maximum of six seconds to load any area, and sometimes the transitions can happen in a second or two. And everything that's been said so far applies when you're playing with two of you on the screen at the same time. It is a shame in my opinion that they didn't add in a few new quality of life things like drop in and drop out multiplayer as you'll have to start a game as a multiplayer pair and then make saves like that but I guess they did tell us that in advance. As far as stability goes it seems to be rock solid, I haven't had any crashes so far, I've only put in a couple of hours into it really just to test the performance across all different modes so that you guys will have a good idea before you buy but generally that's long enough to see some kinds of anomalies. There have been a couple of visual glitches, very, very minor, and only in uh, certain, pl <laughs> certain places, if you look hard enough. But really, it's a good port, a solid port across the board in terms of visuals performance, load times, frame pacing, and in-game resolution. You've probably already gathered, but due to the nature of it being a re-release, they haven't added a few sensible control changes into the mix. I don't think it would have been too much to ask to have things like camera sensitivity and XY axis changes and they're really the things you'll notice. Aspects of a PS2 game that would have been standard issue have now become a little dated. That also goes for the menu systems. There are quick toggles for healing and using your mana potions but it certainly feels of its time. I'm not going to do a review in terms of our standard scoring system 
but I will tell you my impressions of the game as I loved it back in the day. Now if you've played the other Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 which have the combat where you can pause time, do spells and things and then restart it, this is quite different. This is an ARPG and initially if you're a fan of those types of games it might feel a little bit jarring and certainly when I first played it back in the day I didn't like it because it felt like they completely watered down what I like about Baldur's Gate. But as I persevered with it, I realized that what makes the Baldur's Gate game so good is the excellent narration and storytelling. And this has one of the best stories in any RPG still to this day. Another aspect that works so well on the Switch is that co-op play. It's just completely flawless. It's so much fun. And as far as the core gameplay goes, having it completely hitchless with quicker load times is a nicer experience. So I can see why they've re-released this classic. It's almost a given, isn't it, that we'll see the sequel come as well at some point. And it puts a smile on my face after the difficulties that Black Isle Studios had after Interplay went bankrupt. I do think that the 30 quid I had to pay to get this was a little bit too much, in all honesty. It should have been 20. Unlike the other Baldur's Gate games, this isn't 100 to 200 hours of gameplay. You're looking at, if you want to do absolutely everything and all the side missions and content, Maybe you could stretch it to about 40 or 50, but realistically you could do the main storyline in about 15 to 20. So in that regard, I do think it's a touch overpriced. Still, if you're looking to relive an absolute classic in possibly the best form it's ever been, then the Nintendo Switch having its handheld mode running at 60 is arguably the best place to play the Baldur's Gate port. And that's not something we usually get to say. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully this has been helpful to some of you. Please subscribe if you liked what you saw and hit the buttons, the positive ones. What is that about, the positive buttons? What, what is it? The, oh, the thumbs up. Yeah, hit the thumbs up if you liked it and if you didn't, then you know what to do. And thanks to all of the patrons who support the channel and every one of you that watches. We really do appreciate it. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya. Cool, that was a good... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was a bit too good.